Yay, we're here. I have been being bugged all morning. In fact, the people that actually woke me up out of my slumber this morning was the Discord people. So hi guys, thank you for that. I was having like not the best dream anyway, so I needed to wake up, but Lord have mercy on my soul. But I am here for the finale pre-show predictions. This is your official, unofficial pre-show, right? So everybody get your coffee. It is morning time here in California. I am relaxing on the weekend, but everybody is yelling at me because they're like, hello, we want to know what your list is. And I'm warning you right now, even I feel like my list is a little weird. And yet I have double checked and triple checked because I do take it very seriously. This is what it is. And I'm just going to have to accept that the same as you guys, by the way, everybody who is rushing in here to hate me this is the best chance that you are ever going to get so get your screenshots now because not a lick of makeup this is what i look like out of the bed pajamas and all this is what this is the best you're ever going to get so screenshot away um we need to talk about miss universe so we watched preliminaries i watched preliminaries live and yes i am very excitable Miss Universe is my Super Bowl. This is my World Cup. So the way that some of you guys get crazy about World Cup or God forbid F1, I hate F1, I'm sorry, they ruined Vegas. As excited as you men get about your competitions, that's how I am about mine. So leave me and my excitement alone. You don't have to tune in if you don't want to. I am really happy that the new organization has not let the quality of the overall production slip not at all because with a new organization who's not used to holding a miss universe used to holding a miss universe competition which is very very big you would expect them to kind of struggle getting their footing and their bearings but they really didn't the show went on without a hitch and i'm really happy for that i did not like the swimwear i said that in the live streams i don't like the swimwear it just I don't like it. I don't like the, the fabric. I don't like the designs. I just don't like it. Those capes disappeared after the first round of women went through and like, it was weird. Swimwear was weird in me out a little bit, but whatever, you know, we can live with it. But everything else, as far as production wise, I think went on without a hitch. No one really has complaints, I think, but I know that we're all here to kind of discuss what I think about certain women and where my list falls. So without further ado, I made a top 20s list. I don't know where the cutoff is this year. I hardly ever know. So I made top 20 and I would pretty much bet everything that I have that your Miss Universe is going to come from this top 20, most likely the top 15, if not the top 10. Like that would just be weird if it didn't. We would all just lose our minds. So just to let you know, let's see, let's do the bottom one, two, three, four, five, so I can talk about those women. My bottom five are Canada, Peru, India, Singapore, and Curacao. Um, I actually really liked Curacao. I remember that, but I think she dropped the ball heavily during evening gown. So that's how she ended up slipping. Uh, India. Okay. I know we need to talk about India. Y'all are going to hate on me. Look. India is doing a lot. It's not, it doesn't seem entirely natural. I can tell that she's like forcing it. Like she's really trying and I, I get it because she wants to be Miss Universe. She's putting forth that effort. But when it's on stage and that performance comes off as forced, it's not necessarily as enchanting. It kills me that she could not properly execute in that moment the little whip that she did with her arms during evening gown because I understand what India was going for. She just did not properly fan out the fabric. She had a very light fabric for that black gown and what she was trying to do was throw it into the air and let it angelically wave down in the air and fall lightly and gently over her arms which would have been a great effect. And I've seen her execute it perfectly because it's on Instagram. I've seen videos of her actually practicing but when the time came for it actually to be executed on stage, the, the fabric was wrapped around itself and it was heavy. So she didn't properly fan it out so that it would float down and it just looked very whippy and unnatural. And that really messed up her evening gown performance, which is tragic because she tried to do something original and unique, which otherwise would have been a great effect had it been executed properly. So that's unfortunate to me, it, incredibly unfortunate. Uh, Canada. We have to give our props to Canada, especially since we all kind of have been riding that organization and their queens for several years. Yes, they have had mess ups and we've all been waiting for them to kind of develop and get better. 
This year they showed up. Canada, you finally showed up to play and I appreciate it. I wish other countries, Europe, the entire continent of Europe, I wish the entire continent of Europe would follow in your footsteps because I understand that, oh, I'm, I'm reading the comments, but India is something is not that great and eh, she gives Miss Grand vibe. She was just doing a lot. India was just doing a lot. She was really pushing it. I would show, you know, the run through of her performance, but you guys know it's likely going to get blocked. You know, this whole live stream will get shut down if I do that. So I'm leaving it alone. I'm leaving it alone. I don't agree with you. She executed it greatly. Go find the video of her executing it properly and then tell me that I'm wrong because you know I do the research. Like that, that whip for India was supposed to like gently airily fan down. That, that fabric falling from the air should have taken two to three seconds before it gracefully laid across like her hips or her thighs. And that's not what happened. So, but do what you will, because I also know that several of you put France as number one on your list. So who am I arguing with? <laughs> Moving back to Canada. Canada showed up and I'm really happy. The, the woman seems like she's had training. Like they've actually put an effort. Her evening gown was one of my faves. Like this is all I've been complaining about. Like everybody who's been complaining about Canada, this is all that we've wanted. And look at you making the list. I don't think that um, Canada's gonna do likely a decent interview because the Western nations typically do. United States and Canada should interview well, but She's just not skilled enough. She's just not comfortable enough in front of an audience. She just doesn't perform enough to really be a Miss Universe. But just the fact that she's a contender and she made my list justifiably and had one of my favorite gowns, this is improvement for Canada and I'll take it. I love it when countries improve. Thank you, Canada, for showing others that it's possible. We need to know who the brains are because that's the make or break to win. That is the issue and in my list, even though I had a breakdown score wise of who did the best performance wise, I still wanted to kind of check into speaking ability because we all have collective be collectively been let down by women who just didn't have the ability to conversate. So I did go do some double checking on these girls and actually remade my list this morning because I'm that meticulous. I usually remake my list six to seven times. There's papers all over my living room. It's it's a mess. So I did check and let me just say, I don't think we have a lot of very strong speakers this year. It's really weird. Like it's awkward. It's weird that I wasn't, usually we have a good amount of them, maybe 10 at least. I didn't count that many, which is weird. Unless it's the women that are off of my list who were the good speakers and they're just not good performers, which would be tragic. But yeah, it was weird. So we talked, we got Curacao, Singapore, India, Peru, and Canada. Those are my, my bottom five for my top 20. Then I have Guatemala. I did not overlook Guatemala and I actually have my little screen here and I'm gonna do my absolute best to not get copyright struck. I'm gonna try, I'm gonna try. Guatemala is on my list. Uh, the South American countries actually have done really well. I have a, I have a lot of South and Central American countries on my list. Can I get to Guatemala here without it becoming a problem? Wait, this is the wrong one. Are you serious? Are you serious, Miss Universe? We're, we're talking about the 22nd edition. Don't laugh at me. I wasn't just watching Miss Universe constantly. I'll figure it out. I don't know why they're giving me the old Miss Universe <laughs> show clearly I just watch it too much okay what am I what am I to say what am I supposed to do but yes uh Guatemala which was kind of a surprise to me because Guatemala isn't really one of those consistent countries that always makes the list but she's thoroughly prepared and I liked the way that she walked I liked the way that she presented herself please don't make a noise oh yay it's not I really want to review her Swimwear, because I think a lot of the women did so much better in swimwear than they did in evening gown, which is honestly to be expected, I think. Finland, she should be right at, oh, no France. We're not doing that. You guys gaslit the hell out of me with France and I don't appreciate it. I just, just, uh, just, uh, and we do need to talk about, okay, I'm looking at Guatemala. Yeah, nope, I liked her. Her facial expressions, some of them were a little bit forced, but her level of comfort on stage, 
professional. That was peak professional. Like I haven't seen a Miss Guatemala like this in quite some time. She even had like this playful wink. She was playfully flirting. I'm pretty sure that her swimwear score for me was higher than her evening gown, but her swimwear was so comfortable. Like she was up there in like the top 10, if not top five of best performers. So Guatemala should be incredibly, incredibly proud of what she did. I, I like her. She was fun. She was flirty. She was saucy. She was comfortable. Yes. <laughs> Who says vampire? What are you guys talking about there? Guatemala's English is so good. I don't like to base my decisions on whether or not someone can speak English because I think it's a disservice to a global competition. I don't prioritize English so well. I just want someone who can conversate and speak and connect with an audience. Um, Guatemala's performance was very connected. She seemed very in tune with the audience and she seemed like she was enjoying herself. So I put her on my list and then I'm going to get slaughtered for the next person on my list. But believe me, I didn't even book... I had arguments with my own list. Did I change it? No, no, I, cause I can't, I tried to, I tried to justify a change, but I couldn't, therefore I didn't make it. So the next person on my list is Philippines. Yes, you guys are gonna wanna slaughter me. You go, go for it, it's fine. But I have justifications. It's Philippines. Philippines is what, she's 14? Let's see, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14. Yeah, Philippines is number 14. The reason that Philippines is number 14 is because I think swimwear kind of messed up her overall package. Swimwear is really what tanked her. Her swimwear performance was not nearly as clean as it should have been. As it should have been. Her evening gown performance was very clean, but her swimwear, she kind of had arms flailing. One arm was swinging more than the other. Certain things felt rushed. Certain things, she just didn't take her time. And I know you get antsy, you get that anxiety you get that performance jitters and you're just like go 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 I know I know I know I know I know but if you go back and unbiasedly watch her swimwear performance it's not as clean and tight and precise as it should have been also we talked about this during Miss Universe Philippines when I was talking about Michelle D before when she is on peak She's phenomenal, but she's not always consistent. Sometimes the nerves get the best of her and her personality is very difficult to draw out. She is not the biggest extrovert. She's not, and I said this about Celeste Cortezi and you guys did not want to listen to me. I told you that girl's personality was just not, an, it's not outgoing enough to be a Miss Universe and you guys did not want to hear it, okay? Celeste has come a little bit more, or Celeste, Michelle certainly has come a little bit more out of her shell, but it's not natural for her. So she has to force it and push it a little bit more. It takes a little bit more effort for her to do that. It's not a, it's not something that comes to her naturally. So her consistency when it comes to performing is iffy still. And I said this back when she was being crowned in the Philippines, consistency. I said this when I was in Los Angeles, judging Miss Supernational USA. And one of the uh, other YouTubers had asked me about her. And I said, you got it's on Instagram. When I did this interview, consistency is going to be one of her biggest issues. So I don't know if she even remained consistent behind closed doors when interviewing with the judges. But that swimwear performance was not, it, that wasn't Michelle at her best. It really wasn't. That was a little bit odd watching that from her. And I, I think it was just, you know, the jitters of the day, but still. But evening gown, evening gown was great. I love her custom pose. I was talking about this on TikTok. I did like a two minute TikTok completely dedicated to her because the reason I do love Philippines just as a country, their attention to detail is impeccable. None of their queens can be compared to each other. Each individual queen every year is distinctively different than the others. And they did the same thing with Michelle. They gave her a great gown that really adds something to her. It really elevates her in a way. And they gave her a pose that was unlike anything any of the other girls were pulling. No one, what is the thing? No one said that there is a standard list of posing. No one said there are certain poses, like this isn't bodybuilding. Nobody said there are certain poses you have to complete during a certain segment of competition. And yet all the girls are doing the same poses. Creativity is lost and dead, except for in the Philippines, apparently because the pose that they gave her was b gorgeous. It was beautiful. And yes, I'm gonna catch that detail. I loved it. It suited her so well, it helped her stand out. Her evening gown performance completely just dwarfed 
her swimwear performance. So that's what I'm talking about with the consistency because I loved her in evening gown and then swimwear was a little bit weird. And I'm like, what? Now I do, and I did say this on TikTok, because her gown is so regal and kind of mysterious, you know, like she's really giving me Queen Slytherin in that. And I love that, okay, Team Slytherin all the way. <laughs> but because she had such a sensual, you know, gown, I wish that we had got more dimension in her face because for most of her performance, she smiled. Now, granted, you do have to smile at least at some point in your performance, you have to give a little hint of kindness and happiness, you do, but for the the drama that that overall presentation was giving, she could have been a little bit more sultry. I wish Michelle D had given a little bit more Angelina Jolie in that gown because that gown could have supported it. She could have went a lot farther with that than she did. But that's not really, I mean, that's not really her natural personality, which is what I'm saying. Part of being Miss Universe is you just have to have it. Um, so because of that inconsistency with, you know, sometimes her personality is on, sometimes it's not, sometimes her interview skills are great, sometimes it's not, sometimes her performance skills are like phenomenal and other times it's not, that inconsistency is, it's hard to, it's gonna be hard to win with that. Um, and there's just other women that have a more complete package. Is it possible for her to raise in the ranks? Absolutely. Um, but based on what she's up against and just her natural personality, I don't see her doing like the utmost to just suddenly grab the crown. I could, that would be one of the most miraculous Filipina victories in the world ever, like ever. That would be crazy. I do expect her to do better during finals. She should make finals. Um, but overpowering some of these other women is going to be really difficult. Um, but you guys can't be too mad at me because the next person on my list is my country. So, <laughs> so whatever, <laughs> whatever, it's USA at number 13. And the only reason that USA is holding at number 13 is because I know that she has impeccable interview skills. Interview always saves the United States, always saves the United States. Oh, thank you. Somebody said you're beautiful. Thank you. I'm in, in my PJs with no makeup on. Someone, uh, Ben said she's an introvert. Yes, Michelle is an introvert and it's very difficult. It's very difficult to get an introvert to really become an extrovert out of just sheer willpower and just force it. Like it's really hard and it's taxing on an introvert to do so many social engagements and to be so outgoing. I understand it. So, you know, I have mercy on Michelle for that, but being a Miss Universe is difficult. We're talking about Miss USA, which is my number 13. And like I said, USA is being saved by speaking ability because though she's very confident and obviously very beautiful on stage, I do not like the way any of the USA girls typically pose. And my issue with their posing is that when they're on stage during a live performance, they pose as if they're at a photo shoot. Their faces, their body, it's, they put like on stage, there's nothing natural about it. They will go from a smile to a fierce face and everything is very jerky and jittery. jittery. There is no fluidity. They'll go, like they, it's, they're posing like they're taking photos, like they're waiting for the cameraman in the audience to get their shots. And mind you, sure, babe, the cameraman is in the audience photographing you, but you're not supposed to be on stage acting like you're at a photo shoot. This is supposed to be natural, fluid performance, and that's not what we're getting. If you pull up Miss USA and watch through her swimwear performance, it's jerky. She, you can literally see her stop and change faces and pose and then keep going. And for those of you who are like, oh, aren't you supposed to do that? No, no. Cause last year I paid, I played the pause game with you guys last year, live on stream and, oh, you guys are talking about Philippines. Yeah, I, plays the, I played the pause game with you guys last time where I play through an entire performance and during the performance, I hit the space bar to pause the video and I told you guys, if I cannot pause that video and you still look flawless in your live performance, you're doing something wrong. Miss USA should not be posing statically on stage. Everything should be fluid. And whenever the camera person is hitting that button to take a photo, those captions should still look amazing. Your entire performance should look amazing. So honestly, USA is only being saved by her speaking ability. She does have training, but it's more of performative training. It does not come, up, come off as natural at all. 
and other women do come off as natural. So we're gonna keep going up the list. Let's see if anybody's like yelling at me. Haha, -ha, me, one of those thinking you were supposed to do that. No, you're not supposed to do that. No, absolutely not. Think of performing in pageantry like being a ballerina. We've all seen photographs of ballerinas and they're beautiful, right? But do you realize that the moment that photograph was taken, she was in the midst of an actual performance. She was dancing at that moment. It just so happened that someone took a picture of her and it looks flawless, but she did not pose for that. That's what pageantry is. I should be able to take a cap picture screen grab of you and it still look amazing because honestly, performing on a pageant stage is almost like a mini dance. You, it's, it's a subtle dance. It's an art and everything should be fluid. Everything should be graceful. I wish the girls would take more um, dancing classes, honestly. Why do you not like France? I will only answer that question if you are confessing to myself in the chat that you're blind that you are blind. You have to be blind to, to not get it. And I'm not saying I don't like France as a person, like the woman herself. We're talking performance skills. This is an international competition. This is tantamount to the Olympics of pageantry. So no, I don't care about people's feelings. I don't care about, if I don't like a dress, like I was talking about Greece last night, get over it. It's fabric. It has nothing to do with the woman herself. They have asked to be judged. They have stepped on the stage knowing that they would be judged and have welcomed it. So there will be no complaining about, oh my God, she didn't like her walk or shoes or whatever, because it's not personal. And if you think it's personal, then you have personal problems. Who are we talking about? Oh, okay. And this, I did say, even I thought I was a little bit uncomfortable with my list, but I did double check. And I, I have to sit with it, even though I feel like this is so weird to me because the next country I have up is Thailand. It's Thailand. Oh, Thailand. Am I surprised immensely? I just, it was weird. And then I did go back and double check because when I was checking speaking ability, you know, I'm double checking performances just to make sure I'm not crazy, which I know that I'm not because I've been doing this for years. But it's weird having Thailand be number 12, especially since she's so gosh down gorgeous. But you know, beauty is not everything. So I had to kind of just suck it up. Thailand actually had a moment, was it during evening gown? I think it was during evening gown where she had a mess up. She actually kind of stepped out of a turn. It was a little bit weird. A, B, C, D, F, G, H. I want to see Thailand. I'm going to pull it up. But yeah, she actually messed up during evening gown. And I catch those little tidbits because if I catch it, the judges are going to catch it. And I don't think we've seen a Miss Universe that didn't have at least a flawless preliminary and finals performance. You're not going to find a crown Miss Universe falling out of her turns you know, having issues. Here's Thailand. And I kind of want to just see this real quick. Because she came out so confident and so beautiful and so elegantly. Oh, okay. She had posing issues as well. She, she does better than United States does, but she has very posy moments during her initial walkthrough. But her walk honestly has improved since her national performance because I saw her national, I did compares, comparisons to her national competition and her walk has improved. Her evening gown performance, those mess ups kind of uh, took her down a little bit for me. And just those posy things. I think Thailand has the potential to rise during finals though because it's very likely that her evening gown performance was just a minor slip up. But if she can overcome that and keep a handle on speaking ability, she can make top five. She can push through this because she's typically an overall very good competitor. So I think she messed up a little bit during prelims, but she should be able to probably power through it. And I, that's why I was saying I checked so much back and forth for USA, Philippines and Thailand because to have them 13, 14 and whatever on my list is like weird to me. It's weird, but I am telling you, she did have a slip up during, during evening gown, so. Eh. And there's just not a lot of great speakers this year. It's it's weird. It's so weird. I don't like it. Anyways, 
My number 11 is the home country of El Salvador. And it seems like the nation of El Salvador knew, you know, Miss Universe is on our territory. We need to represent because I don't think we've ever seen an El Salvadorian performing the way that she has. She's got a lot of confidence and I did go online and check her speaking ability. She's not as outgoing as other women, but she does have the you know, the personality and ability to conversate with just other people. I love her confidence though on stage. Like it's very commanding and I didn't expect it from her. I did not expect El Salvador to do as well as they're doing. So color me surprised. I just, I like, what are we, what are we saying? Philippines over act, <laughs> over acting. Uh, well, if you're talking about the Filipinos themselves, probably, but we all know that they're drama queens. Um, cause I don't think like Michelle doesn't do any overacting or anything. I don't understand why you rated USA higher than the Philippines because USA, I think had a better showcase during swimwear than the Philippines did. The only thing that really bugs me about USA is this, is the face it's too forced. It's too posy. It's unnatural. And all the USA girls do it. And I don't know when they're going to let it go. I wish they would. But other than that, she had a strong showing during swimwear and USA, I fully believe can out interview Philippines. That is one thing I think USA has hands down. She's going to blow Philippines out of the water when it comes to interview. Michelle's strength is not interview. So it's only for that reason that USA is one singular spot higher than the Philippines. Trust me, I did, <laughs> I double checked because even I thought it was weird that United States was even slightly higher than the Philippines, but here we are and I'm not gonna like rob the girl. I'm not gonna rob her. Sovereign just called Filipinos drama. You guys are drama queens. Are you kidding? I have been with the Philippines for how many years? Like I know you got, y'all are some drama queens and you know it. You know it. Have you seen Filipino TikTok? Are you joking? You love it. Just dramatic. All of you. All of you. I did see that there was some drama regarding El Salvador's makeup team being available to her and everybody else's team was just not there. That seems like it's a little bit of favoritism there. I don't like the appearance of bias in any way. You guys know I don't like that. I would hate that El Salvador would do that or that the Miss Universe organization would even allow it. So that I hope would never, ever, ever happen. That's not cool. Um, number 10, and I watched her earlier. She's one of the surprise, we got a couple surprises on the list, but there's always dark horses. Um, so starting off the list for the top 10, surprise, surprise, I have Ecuador. I have Ecuador and I think that there people thought that I was overlooking some women. I really wasn't. I, I promise you. I promise you there are some women on. Oh, that's El Salvador girl. No, I'm sorry. El Salvador's turns during swimwear, the hip movement. I'm like, she just popped up on my screen. El Salvador was killing it during swimwear. Her turn was beautiful. And that knee lift out of the turn professional. That's what I, I want. All girls turns to look like what El Salvador did. She was gorgeous. I'm no, El Salvador aced swimwear, gorgeous. But her um, evening gown once again is what usually hinders a lot of women's scores. I'm she's like, oh, she popped up on my screen and I'm like, yep, El Salvador, you get it. You get it. <laughs> but we're looking at Ecuador. Ecuador has a fabulous walk, very queenly and another very clean turn. She has emotionality in her face. And she's not doing the posy thing with her, with her facial features. It was very natural. It was very airy. It was very elegant. It was almost giving me like early 2010s ish Miss Universe where we didn't have such dramatic faces, but it was just much more elegant and regal. But yet I like her face. There was dimension in her face. And that's all I asked for. Like legitimately, if I'm sitting here having to study your facial features, you did something right. Because if I just look at you and you look boring, wh who are you? And what is Miss Universe to you? So for those of you that don't remember what Ecuador looks like, who, this is Ecuador. And I have no problems with sweetheart. She's, you're starting off my, my, my 10th spot on my list. And I went back and forth between her and El Salvador. Both of those girls are really, really good really good. I'm proud. I'm happy. 
Um, you guys are going to have to tell me who my El Tacuyo is. I don't know. I'm sure you guys will tell me. Not all of us are Filipinos. Don't gr group us with you all. <laughs> oh, well, I said the Filipinos themselves are drama kings and queens. You know? You know? So we have Ecuador after that. Oh, you know what? This is a woman I think that other people have been overlooking and she really hasn't done anything wrong. So the only thing that's really going to keep her out of finals is going to be her speaking ability because why are you guys overlooking this next girl? Let me see if I can actually find her. Oh, there she is. Next on my list at number nine, I have Cameroon. And I have like, there's nothing wrong with Cameroon. Cameroon is not overly posy, overly showy. She has proper training. She's showing dimension in her face. She's kept it clean and simple and elegant, which is totally fine. She has had no mess ups. Now, am I saying she's the utmost standout? Of course not. That's why she's number nine. But she delivered a very clean, problemless performance which is very easy to build off of moving into finals. If you don't have any mess ups in prelims, there's nothing, there's nowhere to go, but up in finals, like keep, keep, keep it moving. Her record is clean as long as she can speak, which I, I checked online and I've been looking through people's Instagrams, looking for anything of them speaking to see what's going on. But the level of control that she has on stage gives me the aura of a woman that has tried and studied. This is a woman who has tried and studied and know what's expected of her on a pageantry stage and has implemented all of her training and knowledge to produce this. And she's done a very good job, a very, very good job. So you will not be going overlooked in my book, Cameroon. And I wouldn't be surprised to see a lot more come from her during finals because this seemed like she was like, I'm just going to give a clean performance, get into finals and build on it. And that's, that's fine. That is fine. Someone said El Tocuyo is already France. France was never on my list, ever, ever. I saw five girls and I already knew France was not on my list. Not a chance, not a chance. You guys are so silly. Okay, I argued with myself about this one because I always argue with myself about this one. Maybe I should pop into evening gown for this one. Oh wait, this is all swimwear. No, I want, I want to see evening gown because I need to remember what this person is wearing. What did you force me to look at? Not you. Oh Lord. You know what, that was doable though. Like that was a doable gown. So the next person on my list, I have Venezuela. Now, People love to get mad at me about talking about Venezuela because they know that I have grievances with this country and I don't care how much you don't like it. If I keep having to say it, I'm going to keep saying it. I'm going to keep saying it. The Venezuelan queens have all been trained the same. Down to the poses, down to the walking pattern, down to the cadences, down to the facial expressions. I can pinpoint and show side by side screen grabs of different Venezuelan queens from different years doing the same poses, the same walk, same hands on, like the same thing. And that's what drives me crazy because then it shows me that they are stripping these women of their unique abilities. Every individual woman that goes into competition is special in some way, is unique in some way, has their own distinct personality. But for whatever reason, when it comes to Venezuelans, they, they shave all that away, mold these girls into the same woman and keep send, sending the same woman to competition. Down to the hairstyles, I kid you not, go look. She has the same hairstyle as the past, like four or five Venezuelan girls. And it's not fair. Now, my reasoning for this is because the Venezuelans are impeccably trained. They have perfected training down to the point where these women come off as programmed robots. I have said this before, but one thing that is a drawback about robots is that it has no individuality. It has no spirit, no life in that performance. Venezuela is being carried simply because their training is impeccable, but it almost comes, like Venezuelans come off as a holiday Barbie. She's beautiful, she's gorgeous, she's flawless in the most uncanny valley type of way. And even that comes out when Venezuelans speak. 
I feel like their speech has been so rehearsed that even when you ask them a genuine question, they kind of turn it into a pageanty response. It's like, Venezuela, you just got back from Hawaii. How have you been enjoying your time? And it turns into some sort of pageanty. I think Hawaii is just the most beautiful place with the most special people. And everyone should be so accepting to the Hawaiian culture because it is so beautiful and all encompassing in nature. And I love it so, like it's just, it doesn't come off as relatable. It doesn't come off as natural. There's nothing, you're not giving me life. And that's what I keep asking from Venezuela. And for whatever reason, Venezuela kind of like Amanda was a little bit different. Amanda was a little bit, you know, her own person. But now we're starting to like backslide, I think, for Venezuelans. And I don't understand why they are doing this. I dropped my list. I don't I don't understand. I don't understand because even when I watched the Miss Venezuela like actual show for their national competition, it's just, they legit look like holiday Barbies. And if you think the silver nude beige gown is bad in the Miss Universe competition, go watch Venezuela because they are drowning in it. Like, I just, I don't understand. These women could be so amazing and they're still performing like it's Trump era. They're stripping these girls of personality and you just want to make me so mad, Venezuela. Because other than that, like these women are just so, they're just so good. They're just good. Why? I, just, I don't I don't understand Venezuela. I wish someone could just help help me understand Venezuela because I don't understand what they do. I don't understand it. But I really do want to talk about the next person. I do want to talk about it. and just for even though I, I have disagreements with Venezuela because they're so impeccably trained, how flavorless it may be. But because of their training, that is what has been consistently keeping them in top 10 and top five. Their training is just so good, even though once again, I'm going to say it is unseasoned, which is a travesty because you're Venezuelan, like put a little spice on that something. But the next girl I want to talk about, I want to talk about, ironically, these two girls are right next to each other. Colombia. Colombia, Colombia, Colombia. I have a whole TikTok talking about Colombia because I'm so tired. I'm tired of the gown. I'm tired of the Colombia because the Colombia is wearing a silver gown yet again, just like previous years. And I'm just like, why, why? Thing is, Colombia has my second highest performance score of prelims. Columbia is one of my favorite performers, but I don't think her speaking ability keeps her at that level. And I don't think she's as comfortable as she should be in front of cameras, people, or an audience. And that's gonna hold her back, especially in a, an interview room where she's standing in front of judges. They're gonna pick up on that. You guys don't understand how intense the judges room is and how much they can actually see of your level of comfort and how much you want to be there. They can see a lot. So I don't think Columbia is suited for a judging room when it comes to interview, but her performance, peak, peak performance. Columbia performing was, I love, it was great. It was like, that's probably one of the best Colombian performances I've seen in such a long time. She's so good. And I went back after I added up my scores and realized that Columbia was so far ahead of the other women. I had to go back and rewatch her because I'm like, have I dropped a brain cell? What did I, <laughs> what did I do? Cause since when is Columbia ranking so high for me? But whether it was evening gown or swimwear, swimwear, Columbia did not disappoint. Get these gowns out of my silver gowns, silver gowns. Oh, Columbia. The thing is, she's just so good. The facial expressions, the posing, nothing was rushed. Everything was very elegant. And for whatever reason, they're trying to force this very, you know, unique woman. They're making me, they're making her look like other Colombianas. They're making her look like past queens. There's nothing about this presentation that is making her stand out. That gown is not elevating her look. It's more so, it's, pu it's pulling her back. It's really decreasing what she really could achieve. It's just, it's uninspired. And she deserved more because like I said, she had my, she had my he second highest score. So I don't understand why they would do this to her because you deserve better, Columbia. I'm gonna say it forever. You deserve better. 
but performance flawless, flawless. The reason that I pulled her down as far as I did is simply because I don't think she has the speaking ability to stay up there. She's kind of a copycat of Adriana Gutierrez. If you go literally go watch my TikTok on Columbia's gown, I took other photos of other Colombian queens to show you how much that they have been redoing this gown. And one thing that I did say is because this country still is suffering from the collective trauma of Adriana Gutierrez's loss in 2015. They have never let it go and they keep trying to relive that magic every single year. They will not let us forget what that woman went through. And I get that it's collective country trauma, but get some therapy and let's move on because you're holding other women back. And Colombia, Colombia and Venezuela should have achieved crowns by now, but because they refused to develop and let go of Trump era ways, here we are having Colombia number seven on my list, which to me is even still a surprising, but her skill level, her skill level makes sure that she is that high. Definitely. Um, what does that say? Can you put your list on a sticky note? Why would I put it on a sticky note? A top 20 is not gonna fit on a sticky note. I could write uber small, but that would just be weird. That would just be super weird. Um, let's keep moving on. I'm just, I'm reading things to see what you guys are saying. Someone said Australia or Nicaragua. Okay, look, I'm going to tell you guys, I was initially enchanted by Australia simply because she does seem so regal and graceful on stage. Like I really did like looking at her, her evening gown, even though it was beige, it suited her so well that it was, I, my brain almost just wanted to bypass it and be like, wow, she looks so angelic and amazing. But after adding up the scores, Australia is not on my list. And I did go back to double check. She actually had mess ups during, she had significant mess ups during like evening gown and swimwear, things happened. But because we were also enchanted by her, I think other people overlooked it, but my score brain, my judge's brain did not overlook it. So if you guys are gonna be mad at me, be mad at me now, because Australia is not on this list. Even though I'm pretty sure Australia is gonna enter. Yeah, um, I had to make sure it wasn't the other girl because I'm like, I got to make sure she's there. Um, I'm sure Australia probably did interview very well. Performance wise does not, in my book, put her on my list, even though mentally I was enchanted by her. And even I thought I was crazy when I added up my scores. I was like, um, excuse me, that woman was amazing. And then I went back to actually unbiasedly look and I was like, oh, okay. Yeah, nope. I was right. It's almost like I have dual brains working against each other. I have my fan brain and I have my judge's brain and they don't always agree because my fan brain loved Australia. My judge's brain said, girl, sit down. And I sat down because she was right. So that's what happened. Um, oh, I like this one. I like this one. I went back and double checked her and people asked me about her and I didn't want to say anything. Where's, where, 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 just where? Am I doing this right or do I need to back, back, back it up? So I am looking at my number six and I'm so happy she's my number right here. Bolivia. Bolivia is my number six. And if you do not know, because I went and checked, Bolivia has like the cutest, sweetest personality. She's super cute. I like her. Honestly, her styling and makeup here makes her seem a little bit older than she is because I saw her mostly makeup free and she looks so young. I don't know how young she is, but she looks young. But the performance, the performance, Bolivia. Yes, sweetheart, sister boo, yes. I, no problems with Bolivia. She took her time. She is not afraid of a stage. She was very elegant. She was a little saucy. I'm actually curious. I need to see, I need to see her swimwear. I need to be re-reminded. I re-watched Bolivia this morning. I re-watched most of the girls this morning to be obvious, or to be honest. Let's not lie about that. I watched most of the girls again. I don't think I can show you guys. I do want to watch her though. She had this amazing black hair. Was she like, whipping it? I don't know what she did. I'm going to watch this, but I can't show you guys this. I'm not allowed to, I'm not allowed to share that, but I'm going to give you the blow by blow. Let's see. She walked out with a lot of ferocity and face and hip action. 
She gave a clean turn, dropped the cape, and struck a pose, hair whip. Yeah, she was fierce. She was queening. She was queening. I did not like that turn right there during swimwear, but the attitude and her command of the stage was just so powerful that I just couldn't deny her. I couldn't deny her. She did have some mess ups for sure, but her command of a stage is much too powerful to be overlooked because not only does she like being on stage, she likes telling the stage who's boss. And I like that because that's queen behavior. That is, that is very much queen behavior. I look at her face. Look at that screen grab right there. That is the face that says, try me. I got time today. Bolivia, you do have time today. You do have time. And I went and checked because personality, you know, means a lot. Um, she has a cute personality. She seems like she's a lot of fun. I looked at her and I was listening to her and I liked her. So I'm like, if I liked her, the judges are going to like her. She seems like she has a lot of fun on stage. Go on. Somebody said Cameroon, please. Cameroon's on my list. Don't even worry about it. We talked about Cameroon. Cameroon is here. Cameroon is here. We have Cameroon. I don't know if you guys have Cameroon, but I have Cameroon. Okay. Okay. She's here. Um, beyond Bolivia. Oh, we're at the top five. And I was struggling with the top five because originally, simply off of performance, Colombia was supposed to be in my top five, but I don't think she has the speaking ability to sustain me keeping her in my top five. So I had to rework it so that the women with personality were accounted for. Do we want to do gown on this one? I kind of want to do gown because I remember swimwear, but I'm not sure I remember gown. So we're at my top five and who's that? We're going to move on down. Mm, it's not Poland. We spoke about Philippines already. I love that gown. I love that gown. It's not you. Oh, here it is. At number five, I have Miss Panama, which I struggled with, but I went back and forth and looked and listened. And she even has um, different videos of her speaking to a camera, which she seems very comfortable. She's a woman that I would not feel uneasy putting in front of a camera, having interviews done of her. And all of her, look at the screen grab of her face. Like everything about her was gentle, easy, confident. She is unfazed by the judges, by the audience, by the fans. She's very much at home. Panama. I'm looking, people are like, what? Why are you guys always discounting? Like there's certain countries that you guys never, ever pay attention to. Never, ever pay attention to. Um, you guys like Pakistan because Pakistan was being dramatic. That girl was being drama, which is like, okay, she can be drama, but there's still a certain present way of presenting on a Miss Universe stage. She was going more Miss Grant, put it that way. She was entertaining to watch. I give her that. But for what we're looking for, for a Miss Universe, Pakistan is not batting that way. Um, unless she does really well during interview, because there's going to be a couple girls that just jump into finals simply because their interview was so good. That happens every single year. So some of my favorites are not going to make finals simply because they bombed interview and other girls did really, really well. But we'll have to see what happens. But I liked Panama. Her performance was great. She has the ability to speak. I don't have, you know, a entire grasp of her entire personality. I don't think anybody does unless you are there in person. But from everything that I've seen from her, She's not going to struggle in competition. She shouldn't unless she really, really, really messed up. Why y'all hating on um, Panama? 60% of their scores is cl closed door interview. Well, then all of our lists are going to experience a very big shakeup. <laughs> a very big shakeup, especially since they did not give us the interviews. So it's not like we can really see for ourselves. We kind of have to go off what we can find. But yeah, if, if you honestly, if you are really overlooking Panama, because this shouldn't even be a surprise. So that means some of you truly were overlooking some of these women because I go back and double check and triple check and quadruple check. I have watched these girls' performances, each one of them that are on my list at least five times. Don't think I didn't watch. So if you are overlooking Panama, go watch her performance because her performance is not to be messed with. She didn't do anything wrong. She was clean and queenly. She had everything right. So the only thing that's going to destroy her is going to be her speaking ability if she bombed interview. That's it. Because there's nothing on stage wrong with her. 
There's nothing on stage that's wrong with her at all. Oh, okay. So we're doing number four. Number four, number four, number four. Where's number four? Look at all this white. Look at all this white and silver. Ugh, you guys. White and silver, white and silver. Nope, still going, still going. Who's that? That's Denmark? Who's that? Why am I, am I missing a girl? Oh, nope, there she is. My number four is Dominican Republic. Dominic, and I had to keep quiet about her because you guys keep asking me about Dominican Republic. There she is. Dominican Republic is my number four. My number four. Elegant, enchanting, easy, like queenly. I have no complaints. When, I, when you get into the top five, there is nothing to complain about. There's nothing to complain about. Dominican Republic has her own style, her own aura. Her pre presentation is nearly flawless, very clean, very elegant, like gone Dominican Republic. I have no problems with her. None, none. This is, she's giving exactly what is expected of a queen. So she easily could win if she can just knock Q&A out of the park. She is within arm's reach of the crown. She can grab it. She can see it. She can, she can almost lick it. Like it's just right there. It's right there. The reason she's not my number one is simply because when Dominican Republic comes out, she doesn't make me want to jump out of a window and like celebrate. She doesn't make me want to scream. She doesn't make me want to like climb up the wall. She doesn't excite me necessarily to the point where other women do, even though she is very, very good and very enchanting to watch. So she's, she's my number four. And I don't think there's any problem with that. Top five. Hello. People are like El Takuyo alert. What's going on in the Discord? I'm getting Discord alerts as I'm sitting here. Come here, I got something for you. Moonflower, what is the problem? What are they mad at? Discord's mad about something, and I, I don't even know what. We're still they they full well know we're on stream right now. They full well know. What are you guys hating at? You guys are such whiners. What are you guys whining about? I legit don't know what they're whining about. Since when do we not like, y'all better not talk to me about Brazil. I know it's not Brazil because uh, I'll roast the entire king. I'll roast my whole kingdom if you guys are pissed about Brazil. Brazil's not on the list and I ain't putting her on the list. Are you joking? We talked about this during the live stream. We talked about this during the, you better be joking. It better not be Brazil that you guys are in here whining about. K, K or Mexico. Stop it. Do, do do I know you? I'm gonna just pretend like I'm gonna Mariah carry this and be like, I don't know you guys because if you guys are getting mad about Mexico and Brazil, that's embarrassing. That is embarrassing. And you're in my discord talking about Mexico and Brazil. Do not embarrass me. Y'all are tripping. Just craziness. What is this? They're whining about something. I don't know. Next person on the list. Um, no surprise here. Puerto Rico. Puerto Rico. The one thing that Puerto, like Puerto Rico is so consistent in making top five. <laughs> Not winning. Not winning. Puerto Rico is just, it's like, it's almost like they're aiming for top five. They are so consistent in making top five that they just like, that's just their goal at this point, which is fine because that level of consistency is something that other countries would pray for, you know, would sell a kid for. Like they, they wish they could be that consistent. Oh, Portugal. What was this gown? Such a pretty girl, but she could not handle those giant flowers on her arms. Absolutely. Where's a... I think I'm going the wrong way. I want to see, because I know Puerto Rico is wearing gold because that's all they do is wear gold. It's gold all the freaking time with Puerto Rico. Just ridiculousness. Where's the gold gown? Yep, there it is. There's the gold. Like Puerto Rico, really? 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 Everybody's complaining about speaking ability. I haven't really seen proof of many women in this competition having good speaking skills. I, I really haven't seen a single woman who I'm like, oh my God, she has amazing speaking skills. Not this year. This year, we don't really have that. Just so you know, if you didn't know, 
we don't really have that. Puerto Rico, easy, queenly, gentle, enticing, happy, beautiful flash of a smile. Y'all better not be hating on Puerto Rico. There's n there's nothing wrong with her. My top five, there's nothing wrong with the top five. So at this point, like you're hating on the top five, you're being a hater. You're being a hater if you're hating on the top five. Because this, this top five, there's nothing wrong with them. Mm -mm. No. India, India is on my list. What are you talking about? We've discussed India already. Um, I do want to talk about this next girl because after doing my initial, after doing my initial scoring for prelims based on simply performance, once I went and started doing research on personality and communication skills, I had no choice but to bump her up. I had no choice but to bump her up. If, if there's one woman that's got some good, fantastic personality, it's my number two. It's my number two. And that personality has the potential to take her a long way. Because um, my number two is, is South Africa. And I will cape for her. So before you start popping off in the comments, know that I will fight you. I will. If anybody's going to get my defense, it's going to be South Africa. South Africa. Because not only is she enchanting to behold, I went and saw how she speaks and portrays herself and what she's like on camera. This girl is fun. She's bubbly. She's a little goofy. She's fun to talk to. She's interesting. Every time I see her, I'm drawn to her. Even when I watch her, I'm like, God, I want to see more of her. Everything about her sucks you in. Like you, you, there's something about her that just captivates an audience. It doesn't just interest people. Like you are stuck watching her. No choice but to just eyes glued to the screen because of South Africa. There is something in the air around this girl. She, she got some sort of angel dust, fairy magic. I don't know what it is, but everything about this girl is enchanting. And I love it. I love it. Her on stage is saucy. It, she, she has such a dimension when she's on stage. She's regal. She's fierce. She's sweet. She's delicate. She's powerful. How? I don't know. I don't know. But she makes it work. She's like a Gordon Ramsay dish. Like she's like sweet and spicy chicken. How are you sweet and sour at the same time? What is this? It doesn't make no, it's like Korean barbecue. This is sweet meat. It's sweet meat. I don't know what it is, but I love it. it what? She got this. She, she's a good dish. I like her. I like her. And if she kicks it up any more than what she's already got, she's batting for number one when it comes to Miss Universe. Because the person I'm telling you guys, if you if you are unaware of South Africa's personality, I want to be her friend. I want to be her friend. South Africa, I she is she's fun. That girl seems like just a joy to have around you. I love I love it. I'm sorry. I love her. I love it. She's, ah, uh, just, ah. Uh. Even the gown that she chose, yes, it was gold. And even still, it was still special. She looked, uh, she looked like a perfectly baked, like happy potato wrapped in gold foil. And I'm not even hating on the gown because it's actually nice. That's the, that's the thing about it. Because a lot of women could not pull off the gown that South Africa was wearing. A lot of women, if they had to put that gown on, it would have come off as maybe a little heavy and too large for them to just move in. And yet South Africa kept it very elegant and regal. She kept it simple. She didn't overdo it. She really allowed her face and her emotions to carry that performance during evening gown. And it worked so well because honest, it's honest to God, that gown really should not have been able to be pulled off, could not be pulled off by other women. Because that gown is, it, the gown itself is powerful. The gown itself is a statement piece. So let me move me so I can remind people of what this gown looks like. Is that me? Yeah, that's me. We, you see that gown? Do you see that? This is, first of all, this is why I said that she looks like a cute little golden wrapped baked potato. It's because she literally looks like her skin tone is that of a baked potato. Okay, so is mine. Hello, melanin. But it's, there's something about this overall presentation that really, really works. And not everybody could pull off this gown because it's not flowy. It's a little bit stiff. You have to know how to work it and walk in it. And she definitely practiced. She is a wonder to behold. There's nothing wrong with her. She's enchanting in her own very special way. And I love it. 
gift wrap. Yes, she does look like a gift wrap. And we were totally making jokes about the wrapping paper during um, the live stream when I was watching prelims. And even though she, legitimately, sure, she does look like wrapping paper, but I want this present. I do. I want this present. This is a good present. She looks like wrapping paper, but she looks like this is the best present under the Christmas tree. I'll tell you that. I, this it it works it works like if I'm gonna have to give a pass to any of the wrapping paper gowns it's probably gonna be this one because she just she outperformed she outperformed South Africa man yeah yeah I don't know I gotta give it to them South Africa she's she's beaten my country too so for those of you in the comments section you're like oh my god how dare you South Africa how dare you look my country's number like 16 or something get off me okay because if USA is all the way down there obviously I'm, I'm not over here being biased South Africa you get all your cookies and accolades and applause girl she's lovely lovely loverly now South Africa's my number two, which bodes well for her because we know how my love, my number twos love to show out. My number twos are historically very driven individuals. Ooh, look at Laos, all these, all these gowns. I don't remember how to tell my ABCs. Should have been going the other way. So now it's time to discuss number one and for those of you that were in my live stream during prelims you probably already know who that person is because honestly if we all don't have the same number one the shots that you were taking during prelims must have been everlasting because you're clearly still intoxicated everybody should have the same number one it was so obvious that anybody outside of this you're biased i'm telling you you're biased because there's there's no way number one for the world Number one for everyone involved should undeniably and indisputably be Nicaragua. There is no discussion and there is no argument. She was the best of the day. She was the best performer of the night. That is period. That is on blank. You have been smoking something if she's not your number one. You are being biased as all hell if you're telling me she was not the best performer that night. Because I, I have talked mess about Columbia consistently and yet I still scored her fairly and she was my second highest score of the night. If you are telling me that Nicaragua was not the best performer of the evening, you are biased and it has been revealed to you and everybody watching, you are completely biased. It, this was, she, Nicaragua was a freight train. She was a bullet train. There, she was unstoppable during prelims. Are you kidding? unstoppable not to mention every single little instagram video i see of her every freaking story that she's in she's enchanting she cap she steals don't take a photo with nicaragua don't do a video with nicaragua everything she's put in she steals thievery she's a thief okay like oceans a level uh, oceans a level oceans 11 caliber thievery nicar like undeni i don't understand how anybody could deny the superiority of Nicaragua. I am telling you, you are completely insane. You are lying to yourself. You need psychological help if you are telling me Nicaragua was not the best of the night. That was so obvious. It was so obvious. She, she, she stomped all over everyone, everyone. From the facial expressions, to the timing of her turns, to the cadence of her walk, to the body positions, to the facial expressions. Are you joking? Don't lie to me. I don't, I don't even have the patience to stomach any Nicaragua naysayers. She earned her number one spot. And some people are like, oh my God, but she's not good at English. As long as she can conversate, I don't care what language she speaks in. If she can hold a conversation and maintain this beautiful personality that I have seen on stage and in videos in front of judges, which seems like the easiest thing in the world for her, because everywhere I see her, she's laughing and giggling and having fun and enjoying herself on stage. She was, did you see her swimwear? She was toying with our emotions for the fun of it during swimwear. She did this little turn and this face. And I'm like, the manipulation, Nicaragua. She was just like, she was puppet mastering everybody on the stage. Like this was, she's waiting all year to get on stage and manipulate people. She was, just, look at how she's laughing in this photo. 
That's a legitimate laugh. Do you see the facial distortion on her in this photo? That's a true laugh. That's a real smile. Now you guys understand why I criticize smiles so much. Can I please get a zoom in of that face so that next time I criticize somebody's smile, people understand why? Because you, you guys don't get it. You just don't understand. This is a legitimate, happy, gorgeous, real facial expression. Her smile has distorted, her eyes, her cheeks have creases in them. This is actual happiness. This is an enticing smile. This is a joyous face. And she gave us happiness, she gave us joy, she gave us ferocity, she gave us slyness. She was toying with my feelings in front of everyone. I was on live stream and she was manipulating me through the lens. Nicaragua's number one and I will, I will have no dispute. I will have no dispute. Y'all can hate. Filipino, someone's, Wesley said, so sick of Filipinos saying bad things about Nicaragua. Nicaragua has never won their haters because she killed it. Uh, Philippines, Filipinos. If you're hating on Nicaragua, I'm co-signing. I'm co-signing the super chat. Thank you, Wesley, for the super chat. And I'm co-signing it. If anybody's hating on Nicaragua, that's because there's something to hate about her, huh? It's, it's because there's something within her that just boils your soul because she has something that you know your country doesn't have and you're being a hater about it. You're being jealous. And this is where we have to look within ourselves and get and be comfortable with our own lack of skills. Nicaragua is great. That does not detract from you or your country or your representative's greatness. She is fantastic in her own right and I understand the jealousy. I get it. Filipinos, I get why they would be upset. They're used to being the only ones that can turn like her, that have that sort of training like her, that have that sort of lively spirit. This is what Filipinos crave. What Nicaragua has is what they dream about in their own competitors. So when they see it in a foreign nation, they want to go to war. I get it. The United States would be the same way if, I don't know, uh, let's pick a country, Singapore. Let's say Singapore made a military airplane better than the F-22. The United States would lose their minds. They would. They would be some haters. They would be some haters. Oh, they would hate because that's, that's the United States thing. We're a military country and we love having the best military and the best planes and the best everything. If somebody took our best spot, we'd be pissed. So Filipinos, they're hating because this is their thing. They're used to being the best. They're used to having the best training and to see Nicaragua of all countries come out and be beaten up on their queen. Oh no, oh no. The Filipinos will not have it. The Filipinos are ready to just strike her down. I get the hatred, but y'all gotta calm down because she's earned it. She's earned it. She's earned it. She's earned it. I wanna see arguments against Nicaragua. Try me. I wanna see, like what? No one in this chat is hating on Nicaragua. I saw some Nicaragua hate earlier. People talking about Nicaragua can't speak. Nicaragua this. Nicaragua, Nicaragua. You know why y'all are preemptively in this chat? Because this is recorded. This is recorded. People were preemptively hating on Nicaragua before I ever mentioned her. It's because you knew she was going to be high. And how did you know she was going to be high on the list unless you knew she deserved it? And you knew that I would see that she deserved it. You saw. Sometimes when people are hating, that's that's all you need to know when a woman is good. Does she have haters? She must be good. She must be good. Because Nicaragua, as enchanting as she was during evening gown, swimwear was unpar unparalleled, unmatched. I would teach women how to walk and perform swimwear using Nicaragua's swimwear performance. It was perfect. I will tell you right now, Nicaragua is the only solid 10 I gave throughout the entire preliminary performance. For evening gown or swimwear, I only gave one 10 and it was for Nicaragua during swimwear. And it was fully earned because that entire swimwear performance was flawless. It wasn't even basic. It was flawless and it was elevated. She did something special with it. It is iconic. Her swimwear performance is phenomenal. So stop hating on Nicaragua because I won't hear it. She's amazing and she's staying as my number one. Staying.
Oop, dropped my phone. And I would be really happy with either Nicaragua. I would be happy with Nicaragua or South Africa winning, honestly. I, w I would love one of them. South Africa can't perform on the level of Nicaragua, but honestly, nobody, <laughs> nobody else in competition can. Everybody else in competition was a solid whole point. I'm not talking decimal point. I'm talking a solid whole point behind Nicaragua. So I score with one decimal point typically. To be an entire one point higher than everybody is so hard to do. And yet that Nicaragua, she was that woman. She was, she was. She's beautiful without a doubt, but her performance is very Miss Grand International. Um, I think you're referring to either India maybe or Pakistan. Those are those, they were giving some Miss Grand energy, but Nicaragua was squarely within her, within her place. How could you want more? For, if, if Nicaragua were to do more during swimwear, she would be venturing into Miss Grand territory. I personally want more from her during evening gown. If you watch my live stream when I was watching prelims, I was waiting for Nicaragua during evening gown and I'm like, give me more, give me more. And she really didn't. And I could see that she kind of held back. I'm hoping that during finals, she gives a little bit more because she's just so good. I just want to see her do the thing. I want to see her do the roar. Like, let's go, <laughs> please. But yeah, uh, Nicaragua, she's, she's, she's unbeatable at this point. That she just, I just, I don't know. She, she massacred preliminaries. No one was coming near her. So the other women are not only going to have to step up performance wise, they better hope that they really gave their all during interview. And I, I'm hoping that Nicaragua did too, because the only way that she can be stopped, and I've said this before, and it always comes true, I'm hoping it doesn't happen this time. The only way anybody is going to beat this girl, point over here, she's over here. The only way you guys are going to beat this girl, you're going to beat her during Q&A. That's the only chance you have. Everybody on my list is going to have to maintain their same performance skills or boost it a little bit. I would say boost it. You're going to have to boost it because Nicaragua is definitely going to boost herself. So they're going to have to pick it up during finals and they're going to have to wait it out. Don't even focus on trying to beat her during swimwear or evening gown because you're not going to. You're going to have to wait it out and fight for your own survival until Q&A and then try to kill her because that's the only way Anybody overcomes Nicaragua, she's too much of a powerhouse to be taken down performance wise. I'm telling you, the only person that could do it performance wise would be probably Colombia, but Colombia doesn't have the speaking skills or personality. So I don't see it happening. You guys can't stop her performance wise. She's got that in the bag. Kill her with the mouth or you won't kill her at all. Done. 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 This woman is totally... <laughs> This woman is totally crazy telling that Filipinos hate Nicaragua. I didn't say that. Somebody in the chat is, is basically saying Filipinos hate Nicaragua. I don't know. I don't live in the Philippines. I'm just saying if the Filipinos did hate Nicaragua, I understand why. But we got to give her her apples, oranges, and cookies. Like she is the best girl on that stage right now. And I know it, it would make some powerhouse countries upset. I know. I get it. I'm not mad at it. But I'm really happy. I'm happy for the shakeup in my list because this is not, you know, typically how the list would come out, right? Having Nicaragua and South Africa be my top two, Bolivia, Panama on the list, Cameroon's on the list, having Thailand, USA, Philippines kind of lower on the list is very weird, but that's kind of how the shakeup is happening. I'm happy that Canada is justifiably on the list. You see Canada, this is what happens when you finally start doing things properly and you don't make replica crowns and you start training your queens and giving them attention and getting decent gowns for them, like praise, praise for Canada. I want them to keep like doing that. I want other countries to just improve and just stop getting mad at me when I tell you something needs to be corrected because it's coming out of a place of love, not hate. Like when I said that Greece's gown is a humanitarian crisis. Yes, it is. I want to rescue that woman from that gown and the designer that put her in it. It has nothing to do with her. I want to save her, okay? I want the United States to extend her a visa so that I can pull her out of that toxic environment that put her in to the 2008 mullet gown. I don't, like that gown was hurtful to everything that I am. I can't believe that that happened. And I'm so sorry she had to go through that. I would pay for her, you know, therapy 
for her to get over <laughs> what they did to her. It's not her fault. Greece is very beautiful. I don't understand why someone would dislike her so much to put her in such an atrocious gown because she didn't deserve it. For whatever reason, people think when I say stuff like that, it has something to do with the woman. No. If a, if a beautiful woman is put into a really ugly gown, I want to save her. I want to rescue her. <laughs> like she, <laughs> that's what, that's how I feel. And you know, Greece's gown was, it, it was bad. Very bad. Bad, 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 bad. All right, so what are you guys, are, are we having complaints in the chat? I, I am now interested into hearing what you guys think and I'm gonna pay attention to the chat so that I can see what you're saying. Um, I love Nepal. I actually really like Nepal. I also did a TikTok about Nepal. Nepal is what I've been asking for for many years. I've been asking for more body diversity on pageant stages because I think it helps that different corners of the globe see different types of women and see that different body styles can be beautiful. And Nepal has been showcasing that very great. I think that her evening gown should have been probably different. A lot of designers and stylists don't know how to style different types of body types. I could have styled her better, but her during, I love her during swimwear. She was giving face and confidence and everything. I wish that she had had more, tr more, more training because I wish that people could see that women like her really can serve on a pageant stage. It is very much possible. And sh when that woman walked, did you, did you guys see? Cause I peeped it when she was walking, you know, she had the booty just bouncing as she was walking and I saw people watching and I'm like, yeah, that's what happens when you have girls with booty on a pageant stage. It's kind of interesting, isn't it? You kind of like it. She finally is giving a little bit of that representation and people love her. People love her. Absolutely. People, people love her so much. And when I did my video talking about body diversity and all that stuff, people were telling me, oh, I don't want to see that. Nobody wants that. Nobody wants bigger queens. And then Nepal comes and she's super popular. Like she's bringing in pageant fans simply because of her presence. I told you guys, for whatever reason, nobody ha knows how to do marketing for pageantry. But thank you, Nepal. Uh, Jose, thank you for the super chat. Thank you very much. Who's whining about you stereotype Filipinos? Why? Because I call y'all dramatic. What is the problem? I'm, I'm dramatic. That's why we get along so well. You're being dramatic about whining about being dramatic. <laughs> this is so silly to me. That's super silly. After Q&A, South Africa might get the crown. I totally believe that. I totally believe that. Because I think South Africa can outspeak Nicaragua. So... That is very plausible. I could, I would not be surprised and I would totally be okay with that. Go for it. Shoot. She said mistakenly. Mistakenly. Um, a recap of the 20. Sure. Because I know everybody wasn't here. Um, so at number 20, I have Curacao. Then I have Singapore, India, Peru, Canada, Guatemala, Philippines, USA, Thailand, El Salvador. At number 10, I have Ecuador, Cameroon, Venezuela, Colombia, Bolivia, Panama. Panama is number five, by the way. And then I have Dominican Republic, number three, Puerto Rico, number two, South Africa, and number one, Nicaragua. And I even, I still get a little bit uneasy when I say Colombia and Venezuela because I know that they can be very unpredictable when it comes to their speaking ability, but I still put them there based on their performances. I'm not going to mess with it. So hopefully they can come through. And if not, then you're just going to open the door for USA or Philippines or Thailand to move up because they are right there. They're right there. It's just right now, the, all the three countries, Philippines, Thailand, and USA are kind of being a little inconsistent. It's weird. That's why I was like, it's so weird that they're down there, but what am I going to do? Why can't you improve? <laughs> why can't you improve how you criticize the girls? Be respectful. You dismiss. What do you mean? I want, I want elaboration on here. Improve how you criticize the girls. Be respectful. I literally have this entire run through of discussing the women. 
I usually, I discuss how they walk, how they turn, the presentation of their personalities and their attitude. I do not discuss their, I hardly ever discuss any fitness. Um, if I talk about a tan, it's because it's messing up their presentation. Like, what do you want from me? Because it seems like some people want me to lie and say certain things aren't, like you want me to look at a walk and be like, oh, she's doing great, that's fine. If I look at a walk that's not fine and you're asking me to say, oh, it's fine, I'm not gonna do that. I'm not. I am telling you I respectfully refuse to do that. I'm not doing that. Nepal, I like her, I like her personality. I do not like her dress. If you have a problem with me saying I do not like the fabric that they wrapped around her body, then maybe international high competition is not a place that you belong. Because these girls know that that judging table is not only cri uh, criticizing them on what they chose to wear. They're criticizing them on their hair, their nails, their makeup, their fitness, their toes. They're like, they care if your teeth are crooked or if you're cross-eyed. The judges are way more harsh than I would ever be publicly. And you guys still have issues with how I speak. So I'm just like, as a fan, maybe you, this is not the competition, competition for you. But, and none of these girls should ever be complaining or crying about criticism they get from anybody because I promise you, the judges are so harsh. They're brutal. You think I'm brutal? I have heard crazy comments from judges. Crazy, insane. But I'm not, I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna sit here and lie. I won't, I will not. I'm not gonna sit here and say the United States girls tans are okay. Like, oh, she's, she's just lightly tanned. It's not that big of a problem. It's a problem. It's a problem. It's, it's, want me to lie and say they don't look ridiculous when they do that, but they do. The USA girls wanna look like South Africa so bad. It doesn't look good. And if you wanna win, these are things that we have to discuss. I don't know what else to say. Do you wanna win or not? Because part of being a part of Miss Universe or any pageant is to develop yourself to the best of your ability. Whether it be physically, mentally, vocally, you're trying to be the best type of person and presented person as possible. But if you want to be the best presentation wise, you have to address what are your flaws and what are your setbacks. You have to be willing to come face to face with what your shortcomings are. Because that's the only way you're going to fix them and elevate yourself. If I want to be Miss Universe, I have to be able to sit here and think about, well, what's wrong with me right now and how can I be better? Well, I would immediately have to start putting myself on a fitness regimen because there's certain things about my body I don't like that I want to be in a swimsuit. I need to fix that. There are certain things that I've had to have to address as a YouTuber over the years that I had to come to terms with. I used to speak very quickly. I'm a quick speaker because I'm a quick speak, you know, thinker. But in order to have a conversation or have live streams with people that don't necessarily have English as their first language, I had to learn to slow down. I had to learn to be more elaborative when it comes to why I'm criticizing certain women and what I'm looking at so that other people understood the information that I'm giving them. I had to learn to become better. And the only way I learn is to understand, hey, Devana, you're speaking too fast. You gotta calm down. Hey, you're saying these ideas, we need you to elaborate what you mean by saying someone's walk is not perfect. Are you talking about toes, knees, what? elaborate. If I say someone's look isn't, you know, well curated, is it their hair color? Is it the tan? Is it the dress? Is it the makeup styling? I have to be able to identify that. And we've seen a lot of queens change their entire look and look so much better when they step on stage because they sat down with a stylist and the stylist said, this hair color is not for you. This fabric is not for you. This color is not for you. Just, yeah, you, you, gotta, you gotta come to terms with your flaws. Everybody does. That's the only way you get better. That's it. And don't ask me to lie. I'm not lying. I refuse to lie to any of the girls because I meet some of these women face to face. I see them. I travel. I go to competitions. I've, I've had girls like randomly get in my car. I'm driving around like San Francisco and I'm picking people up or I see people. I've met fans and pageant queens in San Francisco. And I will hug you and say hi and I love you. You guys know I'm super friendly. So we can go grab mimosas. But when I come face to face with these girls, I'm not gonna have them ask me, 
well, no one ever told me, you never said that my walk wasn't great. No one ever said that my walk was bad, but I still lost competition. Then I look like a jerk. Then it's my fault. And I'm not going to do that. I've had girls during competition tell me, oh my God, thank you for saying something about my walk because I hired a coach and my coach never pointed out this problem. All they did was tell me I'm doing great. A lot, of, a lot of these girls are paying thousands of dollars for coaches and all the coaches do is sit there and like, you're doing great, sweetie, keep going. What type of valuable knowledge is that? I'm not doing that. I'm not, stop asking me to do it. And speaking, and some people are probably bringing this up because I discussed Greece's atrocious gown um, on TikTok. And I said, number one, when I'm discussing fabric, it has nothing to do with the woman. If the designer wants to get mad at me, I'm fine with that. That's justified. It's justified. If I said your design is crappy and you're mad at me, sure. But also that doesn't mean that your design isn't crappy. Do better. But it has nothing to do with the woman inside the gown. Where is this gown for those of you that didn't see this monstrosity? Because it, it's, it's just bad. <laughs> oh, there it is. This. I talked about this on, on TikTok. And then everybody's like, oh, that's so rude. To who? The designer, maybe. The girl, no. The girl didn't deserve this. The only person that looks good in this type of gown is a 12-year-old going to like a high school dance or like a kitty prom or something. Nobody. I would not look good in this dress. You understand? Me. Catriona wouldn't look good in this dress. Like Miss Universe Thailand wouldn't look good in this dress. Nobody. Angelina Jolie wouldn't look good in this dress. It has nothing to do with the woman. That dress is not a good dress. Not just for pageantry, but for most occasions, this is just not a good dress. And if we do not discuss this, there is no way that other women will know what proper pageantry styling is. The fact that her legs are fully out is like, what? And then it's white. It's not giving her shape any justice. This dress seems very adolescent. It's not even trunk show bridal gown. This outfit, this gown is incredibly dated. But the thing is, we're in 2023. This gown is dated circa 2008. You do not want to do this. You want to pick something that is timeless, not too busy. That skirt, that cut, it's incredibly busy and the whole thing is very immature. It's very adolescent. Why would you put a full-fledged grown woman competing for a queen crown in this? It's unjustified and she did not deserve it. And I'm going to say she didn't deserve it so that next year nobody puts a girl in a gown like this because it's just, there's no way anybody wins in a gown like this. It's not a chance. You will not win. If Catriona wore this gown, Catriona would have lost. No one can win in this gown. So it's the gown that's bad, not the woman. Why is everybody freaking out about Lebanon? It's like, it's a gown for a poor drag queen. Not even a drag queen, I'm telling you, not even a drag queen would wear this gown. This is a very bad, bad, bad gown. And whoever put this on the stage deserves to be reprimanded. Reprimand them. I don't, I don't care if it was her sister that told, like somebody didn't have this girl's back and it irritates me. What's the name of your TikTok? It's the same. If you type in the sovereign on TikTok, you'll find me. I keep everything the same across the board, all across the board. Why are people asking me about Lebanon? Let me see. Where's Lebanon? Now I'm curious. A, B, C, D, E, F, G, H, I, J, K. Lebanon's down here somewhere. Honduras. Oh, Honduras almost made it, but evening gown killed it. You killed it, Honduras, during evening gown. Guatemala. Please don't tell me Lebanon's not the one with the giant flowers because that would be, uh, are you guys telling me to look at Lebanon because she's the one with the giant flowers? Are you, I'm hoping that's not <laughs> the case because it bugged my spirit. Hold on. I'm sure it's something that needs to be talked about. Where are we at? Laos? Oh, no. Okay. Oh, okay. Lebanon had nude. She was a nude queen. All right. It's not that bad then. Let me see what she did. I can't, you guys know that I can't stream the competition without them getting super upset. So let me look at this and see what she did. 
the gown is, I mean, the gown isn't, oh God. Oh, this is not good. Okay, so first things first, when it comes to evening gown, you wanna choose a gown that elevates your performance. The gown that Lebanon is wearing does nothing to elevate her performance. So that's not, that's just an automatic, that's kind of rude. Her walk is so heavy. It's heavy. I think she's lift, she's lifting up her knees too much instead of extending them. She's like picking them too far up off the ground. Oh, she's not, she's not gliding. And she's moving too fast. And then she, oh, she went into an adult, look. She went into an adolescent pose and threw those hands right up on the hips. She threw them, she threw her hands right up on her hips. Like she's taking a picture with a Polaroid. She's like, mom, take the photo. Look, it's my, it's my sweet 14. No, no. We're trying to give mature queen. Not it's my 14th birthday, Dora the Explorer themed party. No. Her walk, I can't show it, but if you go back and like watch her walk, it is so, it's heavy. She's like stomping. There's nothing graceful or elegant about that. That, no, no, absolutely not. And then she's holding, oh my God, you guys, she's holding her train. She's holding the gown. She's holding it. She's got her hands on it. Look at that. Do you see that? She's holding it all the way down the, no, 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 nope. Nope, no, <laughs> I just, you hurt my feelings. Absolutely not. I really, I just, um, everybody asked me about India. I spoke on India earlier. I said that she's just doing too much. She's, she's just doing too much. She's very everywhere. And then she, I know the effect that she was trying to do with the whipping of that piece of fabric, it was supposed to fan out in the air and gently lay over her arms like very airy, gentle fabric. But because the fabric kind of got wrapped around itself, it weighed itself down. So when she threw the fabric, it kind of just like flung in the air and then dropped right over her arms instead of giving that gentle fan effect. And it kind of messed it up for her. I've seen her execute it the way that it's supposed to be, but it didn't work on stage. And it was just a lot. I think she was doing a lot during swimwear. She's just trying to force it and give so much that it's just coming off as unnatural and not clean. So it's just not working. She's just trying so hard, which I get, which I get, which I get. But yeah, so my top three, for those of you who don't know, are Nicaragua, South Africa, and Puerto Rico. And I'm greatly looking forward to seeing South Africa specifically, just to see what she's going to do. Nicaragua will not let me down. She won't. She will not. Not a chance. Uh, Brazil, ooh, I think Brazil like made me mad during swimwear. Brazil lost her spot with me like early, early on. It was early. Everybody was like, oh, Brazil, Brazil, Brazil. And I think at the end of swimwear, I was like, oh, hell no. And I crossed her name entirely off the list. Like done with her. I don't see that happening. So I do expect that there will be some surprises during finals. It happens every year. Some of the women that we didn't know could speak are going to do so well during interview. They're just going to jump into finals and surprise us all and knock some of the girls on my list out. Happens every year. Not surprising. But your Miss Universe is going to come from this list. So that's just indisputable. And I people don't understand <laughs> how that happens. But when I watch a show, there may be 80 something queens. There's 83 queens, I think, this year. By the end of swimwear, there were only about 30 in my in my mind after after one competition more than half of the women are automatically eliminated that's like yeah so some people were watching my reaction video and they're like you're not even paying attention to certain women i'm not you're right absolutely because if you bomb swimwear there's not a chance you can come back during evening gown no matter how good you were no it doesn't matter how good you were you're done so if you don't make the short list during swimwear you're out I don't even bother paying attention or even comment commenting on certain women because if I were to comment on every single woman in competition, you guys would hear me say the same thing about 80 times for each of the girls. Oh, this one, she's being too slow. She's not good at walking. Her feet are very stiff. Her shoulders are stiff. I would be saying that constantly for many different women and you don't want to hear that. So I just leave them alone. Leave them alone. When it comes to pageantry, Usually there's only like 20 girls. If, 
yeah, when it comes to pageantry, if there's a hundred women, usually, usually 20 of them are actual contenders. Honestly, that's just how it is. I wish it wasn't, but that's just how it is. Um, I'm probably not going to do a live reaction for, for, um, cause I never do, I never do a live reaction for finals because I always film it so that everybody can like watch it back and I can time it, you know, I can put it with the video screen capture of the actual competition. So I always film it or I'll, I will watch along and I'll be in the discord with everybody watching and commenting and everything, trying to figure out how to stream it and what the links are as we do every freaking year because it's just, they can't get it together. They cannot get it together. Somebody said, my Devana's list is garbage. It must be because your country's not on it. <laughs> Uh, sorrows, prayers and sorrows, sorrows. <laughs> but yeah, okay, so I think I've talked about everybody that you guys have asked me to discuss, except for maybe someone who keeps asking. It is a funny list. I don't dispute you. I told you when I got on here that I feel like the list is a little wacky, but I double and triple checked. I did check, okay? So the fact that Thailand, Philippines, USA, Canada are like kind of down the list is, it's weird to me too, but what I'm, I, I have no justification to put them anywhere else otherwise. So I don't know, USA stop, you know, walking the runway like you are at a photo shoot. Like stop that, I don't, what am I supposed to do? It's not my fault, I'm not their coaches. If I was the coach, then fine, blame me, but it's not my fault. Stop getting mad at me. The only disagreement is she is Australia. I understand that because I honestly was enchanted by Australia when I first saw her. But after paying attention to her actual performance, I realized she's not really the best performer. Um, even though she, for whatever reason, something about Australia truly is ca captivating. Like she is so enchanting. So I'm, I'm not saying that she's not because she did it to me too. I get what you're going through. And I double checked my list about Australia because I wanted her on my list. Cause I'm like, oh my God, she's so angelic. And after I looked at my score sheet and she didn't make the list, I thought I was crazy. Like you guys don't understand. I have disagreements with myself about these lists. I went back and checked and watched through why I, oh, Aruba. She's, oh, she's so enchanting. She's gorgeous. She's very regal. But if you watch her actual performance, body positions, posing smoothness of the presentation no no you're being biased and i was being biased a little bit too because i liked her but no I, I don't i don't know it's I, it's a no so hopefully oh mexico um i have a live i mean the, the reactions are all still up and they were done live when i saw mexico that there, there was an actual point during prelims I remember saying oh Mexico no it's not your year you're done there was an actual moment I said that um so I don't yeah Mexico's a no for me why do you like South Africa so much she's South Africa has the enchanting capabilities of Australia while still being able to perform on the level of like Dominican Republic, but having like the personality and interview skills of like USA competitors, she just has a good all around package. She's absolutely gorgeous and stunning. She's so much fun. She's like a bubbly personality. There's just not much to not love about her. Everything about her, just looking at her is enchanting, much less walking, watching her walk and hearing her speak. Like she's just, she's a package. She is a package and like the all, she's such a package that I'm like, she's one of the only women that I think can overpower Nicaragua, especially if Nicaragua doesn't do well in interview. South Africa's package is very strong. Cameroon is on my list, but I mean, I don't know what to tell you. You can't, I mean, getting mad at me because there's no black women on the list. What am I supposed to? I'm not biased. I'm not about to sit here and be unfair and be like, I'm gonna put some black women on the list because we need some black women on the list. If your skills did not mandate a requirement for me putting you on my list, you're not gonna be there. Regardless of color or country of origin, you're not getting on my list. VIP section, you're not there. I just, I don't care. 
I don't care. Some years are dominated by Asians. Sorry, the Asians were whooping your butt that year. What do you want me to do? The years where USA is number one, everybody always gets mad and blah, 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 blah. Guess what? USA is going to be my number one. I don't care. I don't care. I don't care. All I care about is skills. Skills and that is it. That's it. If you're coming to me with something other than a woman's skill level, you're wasting your time and my time. G goodbye. Be gone. Get out. I don't care. Black women. What? What? Please don't put me on a list simply because I'm black. Put me on a list because I'm the best. Thank you. Thank, I, I, I'm sorry. As a black woman, I can say we don't need your handouts. We're perfectly fine earning our place. Don't just, don't give me handouts. I'm not poor. I'm not broke. I'm not homeless. No handouts. Thank you. Mauritius, Dominican Republic never gave camera contact during any of her performances when the judges were rating. The judges aren't going to take that into consideration. They're going to take into consideration the um, contact that she made with the judges and the audience. Some women don't pay attention to the cameras, and I understand that. I don't really always expect them to. As long as they're connecting with the judges, that's the most important thing. And then the audience, but them like staring down a camera, they don't need that. But just remember that... Um, can we remember that, what's her name? Cameroon is here on the list. Just so you know. Just so you know. How many Europeans do I even have on this list now that I think about it? Now, if we're going to get into biases, because um, not only do I not have a lot of black women, I do not have a lot of Europeans either. South Africa, blah, 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 Bolivia, Colombia, Cameroon, Ecuador, Thailand, USA, Philippines, Guatemala, Canada. Yeah, I have basically two if you're going to consider them European, which I don't think you would because technically it's not Europe. So the entire continent of Europe is absent from my list. The whole, the whole continent, an entire section of the world is not on my favorites list. And the only ones that would come close but technically are not European are Canada and USA. So if we're going to talk about biases, I feel like I should be accused of bias against Europe before bias against black women because the Europeans are struggling for air on my list. Sorry. Sorry. Who will be El Tacuyo? I don't know. Who, who do you guys have as El Tacuyo? I'm interested in knowing what you guys have going on there. Why do you think Paula is leaving? I mean, I'm sure that Anne is going in a very different direction than what Paula is used to. And Paula has been there for so long that maybe she's like, you know what? It's time for a new direction of my own. So uh, Anne, if you need a new president, I'll do it. Because <laughs> Anne seems to like the glitz and the glam. She wants to move more in that direction, which I think is advisable. She wants Miss Universe to be a little bit more popular, which it can be with the right person at the helm of the ship. Um, Paula... I mean, I can't exactly say that Paula was pushing Miss Universe in the entirely correct position because Paula is one of the people that allowed Miss Universe to be hosted in Israel that year that I was pissed off about that and put those girls in danger. And now everybody's seeing that, oh my God, Devana would have been a great PR relations manager because she was entirely right about Israel and the impact that corporations would face by having their events or having their merchandise or associating with Israel in general, I probably could have saved IMG a little bit of embarrassment at this moment had I been their PR relations manager because now everybody who's associated with Israel is being dragged for filth. I probably could have uh, helped out there, but you know, I'm just here complaining, right? For no reason. Some, El Tacuyo, Thailand. It's, it seems like a lot of people are saying El Tacuyo is Thailand. Someone said, is El Tacuyo a dish? Oh my God. El Tacuyo is a woman who everybody seems to like and we believe should make finals, but miraculously manages not to. So they're trying to figure out what woman that we all love, that we collectively think is deserving, somehow is not going to make finals. 
And from what I'm seeing, a lot of people think it might be Thailand. Which honestly, I think is a good guess. I think that's a good guess. That's a, you guys do pretty decent when it comes to El Tocuyos and choosing Thailand, I think is a decent guess, honestly. Someone said Italy is, yeah, that feels like gaslighting. Telling me about Italy feels like you're gaslighting me. <laughs> Italy, let's get it together. Let's get it together. So Dominican Republic, I don't see that happening. Definitely don't see that happening. Um, yeah, I'm going to say probably Thailand. That would be a really, really good guess. Uh, people are asking the top five are Nicaragua, South Africa, Puerto Rico, Dominican Republic, and Panama. Very much dominated by Central and South Americans. The Europeans are very absent. And, um, I feel like, yeah, this is, this is very much a Latin America year. We have years that are dominated by the Asian queens. This is not one of those years because Philippines, Thailand, India, hell, Vietnam's not even on the list. So this is just not the Asian year. But it's okay. It's all right. We're all going to have fun tonight. <laughs> Colombia, maybe Brazil. Brazil is not on my list. Get it together. Absolutely not. No, no. Brazil, Brazil. I don't think you can justify that. I don't think anyone can. Even if you were a magician, I don't think you could pull that out of your hat to justify Brazil. No, 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 no. All right. So now that we're people are done yelling at me about things, I have done the list, but we never know what's going to happen until we watch the show tonight. So I'm in my pajamas right now and we've got a few hours before it's time for Miss Universe. So I'm going to chillax, you know, um, one of the reasons I didn't do a sit down video to actually sit and film my favorites list is because one of my cords is missing because I just moved, you know, I've only been here for like three weeks and I didn't have a cord. So my Amazon package just got here with the cord that I need to film videos and I will be filming videos. I have many videos to film about Miss Universe in general pageantry. We have to do a styling video clearly. Clearly we have to do a styling video with the nonsense gowns that I'm seeing pulled out on this year's Miss Universe stage. People don't know, I guess, what's expected of them. They don't know how to style a queen. We need to do that. Obviously, we need to talk about Israel and Palestine. And we need to talk about the differences of modeling and pageantry because some people still have not managed to understand that either. And I have thoughts about the supposed highest paid model in the world. Kendall, for those of you that don't know. I want to talk about Kendall because it's getting on my nerves that everybody's like, Kendall's a supermodel. Kendall's not a model. Kendall's a prop. She's a prop and I can prove it. But we have, <laughs> we have a lot of videos to do. So thank God I have my setup here and ready to go. We got plenty, plenty to talk about. So I'll be seeing you guys tonight. You know, hit me up in the Discord. Hit up all the fans in the Discord. They love having lots of people in there to fight with about whose country is the best and whose gown is the best and how trash my list is. <laughs> the Discord is always a ton and a bundle of fun. So come join us because that's where I'm going to be as soon as I log out of here. What's that? Reclaiming the throne? I will watch that. That's interesting. And I have not watched any other pageants. I haven't watched Miss Grand International. I haven't watched anything. Miss Israel coming? No. <laughs> no, she's not. She's not. But yeah. I will see you guys tonight. Enjoy yourselves. I'll be in the Discord. It's going to be super, super fun. Yay! <laughs>